Lions is like bag of tea. You don't know how strong they are until you throw them in hot water. So I didn't know, but I expected something like that. Okay, each day they got progressively worse, and is it true that they told you what they were going to do the next day so you would think about it? Yeah. Yeah, basically. It's so, a mental thing as well as it's a, physical. It's a mental warfare, of course. Day number one, uh, they shave the hair of my head, they put my head in cold and hot water. Uh, when I say cold water, it's a frozen water only. And when I say hot water, there is smoke coming out of it. And they took your head one minute here, one minute there. After that, they took me back to my cell. They told me, you tell us the name of your friends. I told them, to be honest with you, I didn't take shower for a long time and I enjoyed the cold and hot water. You got chutzpah, that's a uh, yeah, word, yeah. nerve. <laughs> and uh, and, and I'm, I look handsome without hair. And seriously, if you see, I keep the style a little bit. Um, the more that you smile, the more that you show them no fear, they lose their control. Day number two, they carry me, they, they, they put me upside down, half of my, my, my body was on the ground, another half was hanging. They burned me by uh, three cigarettes, they um, slashed my back. Um, they beat me by every way possible. In the day number two, uh, the only thing that I can really remember in day number two was the taste and the smell of my blood. They took me back to my cell. They told me, tell us the name of your friends. I told them no. And they told me, do you know what will be your punishment when tomorrow, if you didn't tell us, you're tortured tomorrow. I told them no. They told me that we release three dogs to attack you. The three dogs trained to attack human beings, to, to eat flesh. And they close the door. If you are in my place, what do you do? They put the dogs in the cell and then and lock the door with no, you in there. No, they were telling me the day before. Yes. This, we, we are still day number no, three. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay. And um, so they, they opened the door. Day number three. If you are in my place, what do you do? I just pray to the Lord and I tell him, Lord, just take me home. Basically, just, you know, kill me before tomorrow morning. I, that that, that um, would have to be a horrible death to have these uh, attack dogs. And I was scared because I was afraid that under heavy torture I can mention the name of my friends. I'm yes. still flesh and blood. Day number three, they open the door. My cell is dark. The, the corridor, the light in the corridor is red light. They open the door. You can see the shadow. The three dogs getting closer and closer. And you can hear their noise, their voice, the, the, the feet. And, and I went and I sat down and in the corner. And I waited for pain and agony. And I covered my face by my own hand. And the dogs get closer and closer and closer. And suddenly, I couldn't hear the noise. I couldn't hear the, their voices. I took my hand away from my face to see what's happened. The three dogs sitting around me, none of them attacked. Soldiers and officers start to kick the dogs to attack. Yes, of course. You see, these dogs train to listen to their master. Mm -hmm. But there is no higher master than Jesus Christ. <laughs> Long story short. They took the three set of the they took the, the set of the three dogs and I can hear the soldiers telling them maybe they are sick. Bring another set of three dogs. They bring another set of three dogs, another set of three dogs sit in the same position. But the middle one took a step forward, and he licked my face. But what did the guards think about that? The guards didn't know what's happened. They took the three dogs, they closed the door. They, all of them, they were talking about miracle. They didn't know what is miracle. And, uh, but they were talking about what is miracle, and they are talking it's miracle. Mm -hmm. And they took the, the three dogs, they left. Day number four, officer number 27. Big, huge man, strong man. He came, he opened the door. He told me, listen, I'm not afraid from you. I told him, I know that you're not afraid from me. I'm the one who's supposed to be afraid from you. and the one who's torturing me. Right. Do you have chutzpah? <laughs> he told me, listen, I'm here to make with you a deal. I told him, I'm listening. He told me, you tell me the name of your friends, I will release you. Whatever you like, I will give you. You want a big house? I give you a big house. You want a brand new car? I give you a brand new car. You want beautiful ladies? I give you beautiful ladies. Whatever you want, I give you. I told him I like it. I will take the deal. But first, I didn't eat for three days. Go bring me food, and after that, we'll talk together. He told me whatever you like to eat. I told him shish kebab. And um, trust me, shish kebab is much better than McDonald's. But anyway, so he went, he went to bring the best shish kebab. I sat down and ate. He told me, now you tell me the, the, the guys who work with you. I told him, listen, our group is a big, huge group. Of course. I cannot give you all their names. I cannot remember all of them. But I will give you the name of our leader. You can catch him, and he can 
tell you exactly the, the list of our groups. He told me the leader. I thought that you are the leader. I told him, no, sir, I'm just a servant. He told me, okay, give me the name of your leader. I told him the name of our leader, Jesus Christ. If you can catch him, catch him. Oh, my goodness. Now, he didn't react too well to that. No, he didn't like what it. What did really. he do? Well, officer number 27, he punished me two punishments. The first punishment that he slapped my face. And he was a strong, big man. Uh, I hit the wall. Officer number 27 didn't know that later on I would be in your show making fun about it. He didn't know that. Mm -hmm. He thought that he broke my spirit, but he was wrong. Um, and later on, they took me. But my second punishment is the reason that I don't sleep in the night until now. I have what nightmares. Happened? They took me to another dark room, and they had a piece of wood, a cross shape. They took off my clothes, and they crucified me for two days and a half. Not nailed. No nailed. They tied tight. your hand. You tied your hand, your neck, your waist, your arms, your feet, your legs. And in the end of the two days and a half, they bring an Egyptian mattress called Mango, and they make cut to the back of my left shoulder, and they put lemon and salt on the open. How much can one human take? And one human with God or without God, that's the question. <laughs> I'll tell you what, hold that thought, we'll be right back, because they could not break him. And what do you think about these attack dogs not attacking him? Sounds like Daniel in the Lion's Day. Be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. One new man. The convergence of Jews and Gentiles. The two becoming one new man in Yeshua. When Jews and Christians become one new man in Messiah Jesus, we will experience a move of God such as the world has never seen. If you want to experience an explosive outpouring of God's Spirit, God's love, God's power, then log on to www.sidrock.org to learn more about the one new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid. Off here with Majid, and I don't know about you, but how can a human take what he went through? So they they did succeed. They didn't break him, but they sure broke his body. And they 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 take him to a hospital, if you could call it such a thing as a hospital. Uh, and he is so thirsty. They, they don't expect him to ever walk out of that hospital alive. He's so thirsty. What happened, Majid? And uh, I stepped thirsty in this night, and the Lord came to me in vision, and he gave me water in his hand. And he told me, if you drink my water, why do you need any another water? And um, from the, I drink from the river, basically, of his hand. And um, and next day, I was start to move my hands. And a week later, I start to move my arms. I start to move my body. And I was healed completely to the picture that you see this. Okay, but his friends recognize now that he's healed, he has a new problem. They still want to get him. And so he has to get out of Egypt. Now he's surrounded with other Arab countries. He's a Muslim that has rejected his faith, now believes in Jesus. The only country that he could possibly go to was Israel. Uh, what did you think of Israel? I didn't know anything about Israel before I What about there. the Jewish people? I didn't know anything about the Jewish people. The only thing that I know is the propaganda that they be they, well, having in the Arab So community. why would you want to, if you knew the propaganda, why would you want to go to Israel? Because the enemy of my enemy is my friends. <laughs> I got you. So he, he has a bold escape, actually on a jet ski. Mm -hmm. He gets to Israel, and this is amazing. You fall in love with the Jewish people. In fact, when you recently, the, uh, the Lebanon-Israeli war, you were actually there for the last three days. Tell me what <clears throat> this means to you. Well, in the last three days in the war, we, we did the human rights observer mission to go there to see the war between Hezbollah and Israel. And what you see now is ball bearers, which is the Hezbollah. They ball put bearings. It, yeah. Hezbollah, they use it in, in their muscle, in their, uh, in their rockets. Why? To hit the uh, Israeli civilians. 